It's, it's live every day. Good morning, e learners. Oh, winter. Hey, it's winter. Yeah. It's the wild winter. July. Yeah. It's the wild, wild winter. It's just one participant each year. So far. So the, the kids will also have to remember that it's a Friday, so they have to, I mean, our class time is not the same as it is normally Monday through Thursday. So, I mean, I always post the video as well, too. So they can either do it live or they can uh, watch the video. But I don't post the video until late tonight after I fix up the video, put it in a Google form, and all that jazz. I take every reference to Jaden out of it. That way, it makes me look like I'm a nice teacher. All right. What was the question now? Number thirty. Twenty-eight. All right. So let's do thirty because technically you would think that the last one would be the hardest one. Let's see. Thirty says three point zero two um, plus four point nine. Ugly number. Uh, times one equals b yesterday we learned about the property multi multiplicative property of one what's one times anything one what it's so so one times ten is one times four is so one time this parentheses would be parentheses so there's nothing to do here other than just get rid of the one so it's 3.02 plus 4.9 Oh, no, notice there's a nine right here, right? And there's a two right here. There's a nine right here, and there's a zero right here. So zero plus nine is, so you get what? 7.92 equals B. So that one was just trying to get you to use your smarts. You could have used the distributive property, right? One times 3.02, well, that's 3.02. You could have used the property. One times 4.9 is 4.9. But it was trying to get you to realize, hey, it's the property of one, or multipli multiplicative property of one. You didn't have to write multiplicative property of one. Anyone else? Okay. Yes. So it's not actually the answer. Uh, a number four, you, you just use ten dash. So a number four, what they are trying to get you to do is use the distributive property. Uh, but yes, you could certainly use ten dash. So they were trying to get you to realize that the property that allows you to get to the answer is the distributive property. If you use PEMDAS, I can't make an argument with that. In fact, it would make the problem a whole lot easier. 64 is easier than saying what's eight times 40 and then subtraction nine or minus eight times 12. We okay? All right, uh, it is Friday. Usually I do not call out the answers on Friday. So we just basically collect and that gives me something to do on the weekend other than spend time with my family. All right. That was a poor joke, I guess. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Look at the calendar. So what's the next thing we got going on? That's right. Have a good weekend. Uh, uh, but make sure you get your math homework done. What's the next important thing in math class? Uh, Chapter test next Thursday. All right. Here is your homework. Yes, you do have homework. I would say, and I will call this the Kai rule. What? The Kai rule says this. Are you listening? The Kai rule is this. I also could call it the Jaden rule. I could probably call it the um, Wendy Jackson rule. The Gabby rule. I could probably call it the uh, Amanda rule. And the Jackson. The Caden rule. Not you. Uh, the rule is this. The likelihood of students to turn in homework over a three-day weekend goes down. So the Caden slash Kai slash whoever else I called out is this. I always make the homework after a long weekend count double to penalize those who refuse to do their homework over long weekends. Uh, so get it done today. Well, today I'm leaving to go up to the mountains. Take your book in the car and do your homework in the car. Yeah. In the class. Right. Do the homework in class that. Or that. But it looks difficult. Well, how are you supposed to do it? Okay, well, I'm going to explain it to you. Now, 
Luckily, Carl did look at it and he said, well, it does. I will say this. Today, listen carefully what I'm saying. Computationally, that means the actual math. There's a lot of math to do. Uh, intellectually, logically, the steps, not hard. But there's a lot of math to do today. Okay? Computations. So we are going to do something called simplified expressions. Such a sweet sounding simple thing. It ends up being the, the actual mechanics of it. A lot of work. And that's not hard, it's just a lot of work. You're not going to be challenged by any individual step, but clearly there's a lot of steps. Okay, last chapter, we talked about expressions, right? We wrote some, uh, we interpreted them, we simplified them, we also evaluated them. Uh, we talked about uh, if you have a long expression, you must use pem dash slash gem dash to, to not solve, but to simplify them. And then lastly, we did this thing called evaluate. What's up? So maybe you use it to show you the property. You, you might, or you can use PEMDAS. All right. All right. Uh, this chapter, we threw in exponents, right? We had an exponent class. We did a few things with decimals so far, uh, rounding, whatnot. And we talked about properties. Okay. Uh, today, this lesson, we're going to use all of them. We're going to use everything. Maybe not the rounding. Okay, one new idea, one new idea, and we will only do six examples in class, right? My claim is if you can do these six examples, you can do your homework. So let's see if I'm right. Uh, these are definitely tough. And I don't mean tough like what to do, I just mean to actually do them. It's a lot of math, right? There's a lot of stuff going on there. Look at the board. There's a lot of stuff. If you make a mistake, it's because there's one, two, three, four, five, six things you need to do in one problem. That's a lot. If you make a mistake on step number one, uh, good luck, right? If you make a mistake on the last one, well, you still got it wrong. You got to do six math steps correct. So let's look at this. Uh, well, let's keep uh, pem dash slash gem dash in our mind. We have nested parentheses. We got brackets. And inside the brackets, we have two sets of parentheses. When you have multiple sets of parentheses inside of parentheses, which one do you do first? The last one. There is no rule. You always do innermost first, but when you have two cases, you see this, 5 minus 32, it's 7.3 plus 2.7. It doesn't matter which one you do first. I would absolutely recommend go left to right. It's not that you'll get the wrong answer. You go right to left. I would just recommend go left to right. And that way you have a chance of not skipping any numbers. So Amanda, what's literally the first thing I'm going to do with this? Which one? There's many of them. Okay, did she say 5 minus 3.2? Thank you. Yes, 5 minus 3.2. Who can do that quickly in their head? Go. Oh, it's 1.8. It's 1.8. What? All right. Oh, yeah. Must use PEMDAS. We agreed that we're going to use the uh, the first one. And it's not that we have to do left. Then notice what I did. I probably have to do scratch work. Maybe some. Maybe you can do this one in your head. I do scratch work way off to the side, out of the way. And then when I write to the answer to that, I'm not going to skip the parentheses. I'm going to leave them in here. In this case, the brackets. Notice I put the division symbol. I don't do division next because I still have one more set of parentheses to deal with. 7.3 plus 2.7 is? What is it? What she said. Okay. Now be careful because see how much stuff there is? If a lot of students that make a mistake, they leave off something. It says plus 4, end bracket, times 7. You okay? You tell me. Easy or hard? Easy, easy. Well, I mean, it's easy to know what to do, but notice we've already done two calculations, and we've had to write a whole bunch of stuff down. Every time you write something down, if you're like me, sloppy handwriting, you can make a mistake simply because you can't read your own handwriting. What's up? I, I would prefer that you just, you know, maybe draw a line down your paper and maybe do scratch work on one side. Okay. All right. Mathematically, do we still have parentheses or are we done with parentheses? We still have parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we have two operations. Addition, division. Which one do we do first? And it's not a friendly division, is it? No. Okay, but it is divided by 10. Divided by 10 does what? 
doesn't add zeros. That's multiple. Okay. Or in other words, it moves the decimal place to the to the left. Right? How many places? Once. So yes, I'm gonna do 1.8 divided by 10. In other words, that's just move the decimal place once to the left. Once again, if you're going to make a mistake, it's that you think you did all things in the parentheses and you didn't. Secondly, try not to do more than one step at a time, even though most of you could probably already tell me what 0.18 plus 4 is. Okay, well, maybe on that one, but my point being is that try not to do more than one step. So we have 4.18, and then we have to times it by 7, there's your answer. Oh, by the way, this was box 1. So you tell me, are you going to get this one right? Or are you sure you're going to make a mistake on it? Sure, I will make a mistake. I would say for a third of you, I am sure you will make a mistake on it. Why? It's too many math steps. However, if you show me you know what you're doing, you're not going to lose all the points. I will give you partial credit. You need to show me that you know the right steps. But the first thing you do is add 4 to 2.7 because you know, you're like, oh, that's 6.7. You're absolutely going to lose all the points. But if you show me you're doing the right steps, you at least won't lose all the points. All right, who's lost? It's just PEMDAS, right? That was tough. I said, how many were we going to do? Four. I thought it was three, six. Oh, six. Can I say six examples, something like that? Yeah, six. Okay. All right, what does this one involve? As opposed to the previous one. Well, I got a fraction. What else do I got? I got exponents. So I got exponents and fractions. Remember, fraction bar acts as a grouping symbol, like parentheses. That means I'm going to do what's in the numerator first, or I will simplify the numerator, I will simplify the denominator. You could do either one for you. don't have to do the numerator first. Okay. Uh, which one do you want to do first, the numerator or the denominator? Numerator. All right, let's so do the numerator first. I got a lot of stuff going on there, but I also have parentheses. So we have to do parentheses first, but inside the parentheses we have exponents. So you technically do the exponents first. Four squared is, so this is 16 minus 15, and most kids would probably not write 16 minus 15, they'd write. Most kids, when they saw four squared minus 15, and they actually did that, would probably not write 16 minus 15, they'd write. Okay, okay, I'm with you. I got you. I got you. I meant that most kids that did it correctly would probably put one instead of write 16 minus 15. But you're right about the eight thing. I agree. Some of you kids out there will do four times two. And I shouldn't even say that because I just reinforced the wrong way to do it. Whew. All right. There are other kids out there that are like, wait a minute. I'm going to do all the exponents at once. So four squared is 16. Three squared is. Nine. And three to the third is three times three times three. Three times three is Nine. times another three is 27. But technically, you must do parentheses first. So if I really were following the steps, I would write 16 minus 15 and all this rest of stuff. And two times 12 is. So technically, I would have to do that. If I want to do it one step at a time, it's going to be a lot of steps. Okay, 16 minus 15 is 1, 12 times, uh, 2 times 12 is 24. Where in the world am I getting all that from? Because I'm choosing to do sometimes more than one step. What's your question? Um, no, up here. What's your question? Question, Jeremy? Um, can I answer? Oh, okay, so let's get back to here. So. 16 minus 15 is 1. 3 squared is, well, I didn't do it yet. Uh, 3 to the third didn't do it yet, but I did do 2 times 24. So I'm trying to show you if I do all the steps, you know, as I'm supposed to do them. You do the parentheses before exponents. All right, let's do exponents. 3 squared is, and 3 to the third was, and I need a lot more space. So you see the little arrow thing? If you start writing things to the left, right you might run out of space so i'm going to use the space up here i'm just showing the reader of my work of where i'm going so three squared was nine you said three to the third was 27. one times nine 
27 minus 24. This big ugly thing is actually the number. This big ugly thing is actually the number. It's actually the number three. Imagine that. This is what's called a math teacher problem. A math teacher problem is where you start with a big hunk of mess and the answer ends up being like one, two, or three. Are we all right? Yes. I want you to put as many steps as you need to accurately get to the answer. If you're going to tell me you can go from here to three, I'm not believing it. But I have also will believe this. Four squared is 16 minus 15 is. I can live from here to here, right? Yes. So first of all, is it okay if we do like use a calculator for some simple stuff? Well, remember, you may always have what in front of you? A calculator. You may always have a multiplication table. I would prefer that you check the final answer with a calculator, but I do need you to absolutely try to do it by hand. And I will, you know, I'll let you use a, a multiplication table. But let's try to do it by hand. Oh, by the way, how in the world are you going to type that into a calculator? Oh, you can. How do you write fraction bar with your calculator? Division symbol. So if you were to type this into your calculator, you would need one more set of parentheses on the top and one more on the bottom. If you type that in as it appears now and then put a division symbol right here, top divided by bottom, you will get three. But you have to type it in the way it appears using your caret key. Yeah. And then is it okay if you format it slightly differently to make it more As long as you're following PEMDAS. And I would just encourage you not to do too many steps in your head. So, all right. How many did I say we were going to do? Six. Six. And we just did? Two. We just did two. That was someone turning in an assignment. All right. Okay, this one easy or harder? All right. Get going on it. I'll give you a 30 second head start. See if you can beat me. Because you literally have four nights to get it done. Tonight, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night. We're getting number 14. I know. It's not. First Some of you are going to wake up at 5 o'clock on Tuesday and realize you haven't done your math homework. Yet. That's me. That's why I called the Kai <laughs> rule. <laughs> I wasn't joking when I said the Kai rule. Oh, I thought you were just doing that. Actually, I do remember turning my stuff in. It feels Sometimes, but the times you would not turn in your homework was always oh. after a long weekend. This is too weird. <laughs> when you would think paradoxically that you have so much time to get one assignment done that it would be the time when everyone gets their homework done. But I always see kids not turning homework Me. after a long weekend. Me. All right, your 30 seconds is up. Let's see. Uh, I've got to do parentheses before exponents. Inside the parentheses, I got exponents. 3 squared is 9. So that turns into 72 divided by 9. Uh, let's see. 72 divided by 9 is 8. I'm done with my parentheses. Now I do exponents. 5 squared is not 10. It's 25. Six times eight is 48. So this is 48 plus 25. That is 73. Yeah. Yeah. Did you beat me? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, you tell me. Easy, medium, hard. Medium, easy, medium, medium hard. hard. It's kind of medium. How many steps does it take to actually do this? Too many. Well, they're right here. I did it one step at a time. One, two, three, four, five. It takes five steps. If you screw up the first one, and you write, instead of 9, you write, oh, by the way, 72 is divisible by 6. It goes 12 times. You're going to get the wrong answer. Yeah. Yeah, the, what, the way I showed you was, what, please stop talking. The way I showed you, sorry, sorry. The way I showed you is what I would like to see. One step at a time. That's a lot of work. That's why you're in pre-algebra, not course one. Okay. 
Uh, recall this. Anybody? You told us this last year. Terminator. No, it's not Terminator. I know. I know. Uh, my dad forced me to watch it too. Forced you? It's a good movie. I don't know. Wait, what is it called? I, I want to watch it now. Uh, it's actually Radar. You can't watch. Oh. Uh, I can watch it. All right, but it is but it is a classic science fiction movie. Oh well, if it's science, I love science. All right, um, here we go. It is on. They take out the bad parts about it. They put on regular television. Uh, uh, not that it's a good movie. Uh, here we go. Uh, you do need to write this down. That means everyone, including the people that are doing their homework, you need to stop right now, and you need to write this down. This is new, brand new. Here we go. We're gonna talk about something called a coefficient. A coefficient that is a number. That is a number that's attached to a variable through multiplication. It is a number, could be positive or negative, that's attached to a variable through multiplication. That is called a coefficient. What number is attached to this variable through multiplication? Look at the board. What number is attached to this variable through multiplication? Two. Two, Two is the coefficient. Coefficient is a fancy word for a number in front of a letter. And now I'm going to lose my math license for saying that. So uh, coefficient is a fancy way of saying the number attached to the variable through multiplication. But yeah, it's the number attached to the letter. Okay, two is the coefficient. Look at the board. These are all new. You're not going to get this. You do not know this. What? You didn't know what a coefficient was before I just said this. No, but I probably could do the math. Yeah. There's no math here. There's no math. Like, I would it's a definition. <laughs> All right. Two is the coefficient. Two is the coefficient. What's the coefficient? Uh, uh, wrong. Negative. negative 32 is the coefficient. So the coefficient will include whether it's positive or negative. You don't have to say positive two. But if it's negative, you've got to say negative 32. So I got a question. So is it like if it's like five minus two x? Well, let me, let me teach, and then you can ask a question in five minutes. All right. Because I am literally about to teach that. Okay, so negative 32 is the coefficient. All right, look at the board. What do we got? Uh, how many? Four. Four. All right. What if I were to add that to that? How many do we get? My claim is that you can do this, you can do what we're about to do. So you tell me, easy or hard? Easy. The only difference, <laughs> listen please, the only difference is that instead of having a picture of four apples, I'm going to write 4A. Instead of having a picture of two apples, I'm going to write 2A. So what's the answer? 2A. So you tell me mathematically, what did you just do? I used the word that I just described. What did you do? What did you do? Added two and four. I said to use my words. What did you do? I took the coefficients of the variable A and added them together. Okay. That's what I did. Okay. What am I adding? Stop and look at the board. What am I adding? Two apples. And what's the answer? Six apples and bananas. There are six apples here? No, no, it says and bananas. She says six apples. So what's the answer here? Four A plus two B. Well, I mean, from the picture, what would be the answer? There's no A. The picture. Four apples and two bananas. Yeah, that would be the answer, right? Four apples and two bananas. So in the coefficient world, that would be 4A plus 2B. So what's the answer? 6AB. Six. Six 6C. Six what 6 do you have here? 4 plus 2. I have no 6 of anything. It's B. Why is it that answer? Because it's Agreed. But why is it not 6AB? Because that's how it goes if you add it. Help us out, Callie. 
can't add apples and bananas. Yeah. You can add apples and apples. So the reason you can't add these together just like in the picture form, because they're not like each other. In fact, that's the word that we will describe it in math terms. We will say this, write this down, box four. Like terms, just like the picture. If you're going to add or subtract something, they better be alike each other. These are terms where the variables and their exponents are the same. We're going to say you are like, and you can add and subtract, when the letters, that's the variables, and their exponents are the same. You're not writing down anything. Write this down. If you are a like term, not only are the letters the same, the exponents must be the same. If the letters aren't the same, you can't add or subtract. What did we do in the previous slide? We didn't add anything. We just wrote 4a plus 2b and we were done. So stop and let me teach the class. And then hold that. It's a good question, though. All right, hold the questions for a second. Let me get to at least one example. So the like term is when the letters, the variables, are the same and the exponents are the same. Wait a minute. There's no exponent. What's the exponent? What's the exponent? If there's no exponent, we had this already. If there's no exponent, what's the exponent? Then that makes it one. So what's the exponent? One. One. Remember I said you're all 13 to the first power? So we just don't write that. So when there's no exponents to the first power, what's the exponent? What's the exponent? What's an exponent? The small number above it. So what's the exponent? What's the exponent? So the exponents are the same. Are the variables the same? If the variables are the same in the x, we can add those. Okay? Those are like terms. Hey, what's the exponent? One. What's the exponent? One. Well, the exponents are the same. Are the letters the same? No. Non-like terms. Can't add those. Can't subtract those. What's the exponent? Two. Two. What's the Two. exponent? Two. What's the variable? Two. Like Two. terms. Question. Wait, so like you can add it, but you can't get any equation out of it? We're going to see that here. So we got to get to what are like terms first. If you have like terms, you can add or subtract them. If you have unlike terms, you can do nothing except multiply and divide. All right. What's the exponent? Two. What's the exponent? Three. Can we add those? Yeah. No. no. The Sorry. exponents must be the same if we are going to add or subtract. All right. Not like. Are we okay with this? I'm not sure on this one. I have a bunch of people saying the wrong answers here. What? So say it's like there's something and then all of a sudden it's plus P. Well, how about you we do an example first? <laughs> Most of the questions you have are typically well, let me get to an example first. All right, write this down, box five. So when or how do you do this thing called addition subtraction? If you have like terms. To add or subtract, you add or subtract the coefficients, and then you rewrite the variable. That includes its exponent. You don't do anything with the exponents when you're adding or subtracting. You just rewrite them. You don't do anything with the variables when you're adding or subtracting. You just rewrite them. But if you have like terms, you got to have like terms. You simply add or subtract their, their uh, coefficients. Just like we already did, 4a plus 2a is 6a. Intuitively, you knew what to do. But you can only do this if you have like terms. If you don't have like terms, you leave it alone. You can do nothing with it, which kind of answers your question, you guys. You can't do anything with it if it's not a like term. You just leave it alone. How about, wait, one example. I was hoping that would answer your question, but it still hasn't. So wait for one example. Are we OK? All right, let's see what happens. Step number one. I'm going to go from left to right. What's the variable? A. What power? First power? Do we have any other a's to the first power? Yeah. So the ones that are a's to the first power, we can group together 
and add or subtract their coefficients. Are we adding or subtracting? Adding. How do you know? Eight doesn't tell me to add or subtract. What tells me to add or subtract? Because it says plus. So I'm going to group together this. Hey, can we subtract eight and five? Yes. Why would we not be able to do eight minus five? Uh, notice what we're not doing. We're not going from left to right using PEMDAS. When you combine like terms, brand new rules. Because we're grouping together like terms. So the coefficients of 8 and 3, you're going to add. Why? Because of that plus. Well, I got 11a. Well, that's 8 minus 5. 8 minus 5 is? 3. So the answer is right there. But then could you add 3 and 11? You can only add like terms. What's the variable? What's the variable? Oh, no variable. You can't add them. What? Wait, so. Okay, so if it's like that and then out of nowhere it's just plus then A. Then you can't do anything with the A. With A. Then right. you put plus A or minus A if it's being subtracted. Oh, uh, that's the question. Yes? So, like, but remember, if we were to use the pictures, this would be 11 apples and, I don't know, three over there. I'm just playing five. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we can throw some numbers and prove it's not true, correct. Okay, let's do another one. Look at the board. For me, I go left to right to see what I'm going to group together. What can I group with 10y? Except it's not a 5y, it's a, a minus 5y. So I can group the 10y and the minus 5. Then I come to 8x, can I group it with anything? I have kids that will take a highlighter and highlight what they can group together. So 10y minus 5y is 5y. We got it? Yeah. Can I group these two together? No, yes. Which one? Eight and two. No, you said no, yes. Which one? Yes or yes, no? Yes. yes. So 8x and 6x. Hi? Oh, uh. Yeah. Now you're just now you're just guessing. I don't know. Fourteen x. Oh. What? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. What? Mm -hmm. uh, let's get some done here, and then the answer is yes. Unless it's emergency. Hey, what do you notice about this one from yesterday's class? Jenna, are you paying attention? What do you notice about this one from yesterday's class? What does it have right here? No. So we said over here. Distributive property. You remember the distributive property? Yeah. What do I got to do? Well, I'll put 12 into everything. In here. I got to put 12 into everything in here. For those that do we need to use that distributive property or PEMDAS? And I said, well, whichever one works. So can I add X plus 2? Yeah. No. Not like yeah. terms. No, I can't. You can. I can't because they're not like terms. So I must use the distributive property. All right. Somebody do the distributive property for me real quick. What do you get? 12x. Well, what I got. 12x plus 24. Who doesn't see that? The first arrow gives me 12x. The second arrow gives me positive 24 plus 24. I rewrite the rest of the stuff. You with me? Yeah. Uh, where are the like terms? You see that? Yeah. What is 12x and 4x? Uh, 15x. What's left? Uh, 24, minus 15. 15. 24 minus 15. That's 9. Oh, you, you can. Are we okay? Ty, are we okay? Yeah. All right. Don't say yes if you mean no. Look at that sucker right there. You got to pay attention. Do we know how to do this? No. Yes. yes. What's the obvious answer? Is that multiplication or addition? Multiplication. Four times three? Oh, 12x to now the Now we got to remember back, way back when the start of the chapter, what's x to the second times x to the third? Uh, x to the fifth power. X to the fifth. It's been a while since we did that. Remember, when you multiply, 
you add the exponents to common bases. X is the same as X, right? Yes. So 2 plus 3 is 5, right? You are allowed to multiply or divide on like terms. Right? Notice x squared is not the same as x to the third, but you can multiply. All right. Let me finish. One more. Here we go. What do you notice immediately? What do you got? There is the distributive property, not only the fastest girl in school, but the fastest math as well, too. Good job. You didn't think I noticed that, did you? Good job, whatever it was you did, which was what, run around the building? I did, building? Too. I did run around the building and, and push ups. Good job. Set up. All right. Distributive up. property. Who can do it real quick? Do it. Well, David's doing it. Go. No. X? It's 11 and 12. Stop. Hey, everybody, stop for a second. David, do the distributive property real quick. First arrow will give me, second arrow will give me 24M, right? So you'd get the first arrow is 12, the second arrow is 24. David, what can we group together? Which gives me? And then the plus 12, this is Jackson's question. What happens to 12 plus 12? You just put it there, you're done. All right, have a good weekend. Thank you. Uh, 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 so when is the whole thing? Don't come to school on Monday. Be all by yourself. So uh, I need you to talk to the front office and say you need to talk to, can you write this down? Miss Lovato, L-O-V-A-T-O. -O. And so you need to tell her that. Um, I, here's what I'll do for you. I'll take my phone out. Uh, who, who's, who's, who are you friends with in here right now? Uh, Jenna. Jenna, can you take a picture of your homework and text her? You know, the, from the textbook? Okay. You guys can make that happen? Okay, cool. And then Miss Lovato will help you out with your textbook. What's up, David? Oh, thank you. My desk. Oh, that's a nice one, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you, David. Oh, yeah, warning. You're going to get a bunch of missing work emails from me. What do you mean? Oh, you're going to turn in. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good.